waiting for you. And you know before I ever say it, I believe in miracles. And miracles happen every day. As long as God hears and answers prayer, there will always be miracles. Remember that. And you and I believe in miracles because we believe in God and in the power of prayer. Today, I'm not going to have any guests. I'm just going to talk to you. I hope that you'll have your Bibles out and that somehow I can make Jesus a little more real to you. You've heard about these wonderful miracles, and yet the greatest need in that life of yours is for the spiritual healing, the great spiritual touch. Many of you folk know that Dr. Freiling is the pastor of the First Covenant Church in Minneapolis, a very marvelous church a very conservative church. And Dr. Freiling was one of the pastors of Minneapolis who uh, cooperated with us when we were there in a service recently. And Dr. Freiling was sitting on the platform with other pastors. And during that great service, the power of God began falling all over the arena. Oh, it was thrilling. If you've been to one of the services, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And um, just as naturally, it was just the most beautiful thing, suddenly the Holy Spirit descended upon Dr. Freiling, this very conservative pastor. And uh, <laughs> it was something that you cannot describe. There are no words in the human vocabulary to describe these spiritual experiences. Well, it was three or four days after this beautiful spiritual experience that I received this personal letter from Dr. Freiling, and uh, I want to just share with you one paragraph of a personal letter that he wrote to me. People from my congregation and fellow pastors have asked me about the experience of coming under the power of the Holy Spirit as you touched me. To which I can say that it was very simple and beautiful. It was, in fact, the most normal, unsensational spiritual feeling. And far from being, as some might imagine, extremely different from every other proper spiritual manifestation, it seemed rather to bring together and to harmonize in that moment all the beauties and the charms which the Holy Spirit had previously given. To be under the Spirit's anointing is truly a normal state. All else is abnormal. And this comes from the pastor, perhaps, one of the most conservative churches in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the pastor of the First Covenant Church. And so today, for just a very few minutes, we're just going to speak about the wonderful person of the Holy Spirit. I've discovered something recently, and that is the fact that they it's marvelous to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Remember something, the Holy Spirit is a person. Not just one of the attributes, not just an influence. The Holy Spirit is as definitely a person as Jesus, the Son of God, is a person. As God is a person with a very definite personality. And we see the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. As you come into these miracle services, we're awed as we see simple, 
visible manifestations of the power of God in the healing of sick bodies. You thrill to it. It's supernatural. That's the reason you do not need Catherine Kuhlman to lay hands on you, pray for you. That's the reason it's so marvelous that folk just sitting there in the services are instantly healed by this great unseen power, this great unseen person. That's thrilling. It's thrilling to see the manifestation of his power as people are slain by the power of the Holy Ghost. Call it whatever you will. The slaying power. I'm always amused when <laughs> those who know nothing about the Holy Spirit will use the modern term. They were zapped. <laughs> oh, I think that's the very first time in my whole life I've ever used that term. But it's, it's probably a modern term. But I don't know how better to describe it than to just say they are slain by the power of God. It's the Holy Spirit. I don't understand it. Do you really think that I understand how it is that a great big man, 200, 225 pounds, standing there and then suddenly... In just a split second, his body is lying prostrate on the floor. I had nothing to do with it. Believe me, I tell you the truth. I have not one thing to do with the slaying power of the Holy Spirit. And I do stand there odd. I can't give you an explanation except for the fact that perhaps these old physical bodies of ours are not geared for so much power. Maybe that's the reason before we can stand and see God face to face. For the Word of God says that no man hath seen God. Before we can stand in His holy presence, this which is mortal must put on immortality. This which is corruption must put on incorruption because he's a holy God. And these mortal bodies of ours can't stand in the presence of such holiness. These physical bodies that are open to sickness and sin. This physical, this corruption just isn't geared for God's holiness and geared for so much power. But when we stand in his glorious presence after the old heart has taken its last beat, we'll have resurrected bodies, new bodies, glorious bodies. Oh, that's thrilling. It's marvelous to see the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. And I believe in the gifts of the Spirit with all of my heart. And to see these gifts being manifested. But that's not what I want to talk about today, not really. I believe that there are literally thousands and thousands of men and women who are in the great charismatic movement who see only the manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Who know very little about the person of the Holy Spirit. You know him as a person. It's the greatest experience in the world. Paul knew that experience. He knew. Paul not only knew the power of the Holy Spirit, 
But he also knew the person and the personality of the Holy Spirit. That's why he wrote, Oh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who can fathom it? And where would any of us be this very hour were it not for that matchless grace? And he continued. And the love of God. Who can fathom the love of God? And yet we see it manifested constantly. and in the lives of others. But Paul didn't stop there. And the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that fellowship. He's more real to me than any earthly person I've ever known. You know, a consecrated life is a lonely life. I would lie if I were to tell you that it wasn't a lonely life. It is. You say, Catherine Kuhlman, are you talking about the fact that that your life could possibly be a lonely life. You don't understand. You don't really understand. There are thousands and thousands of people that surround you constantly. Thousands of people. And yet, when it's a consecrated life, My life socially is very limited, almost nil. It's because, you see, I'm busy doing the master's work. But there is a fellowship that I know that is greater than any human fellowship that any human being has ever known. There's a close there is a communion with him that's the most priceless thing that I have in this life of mine. Paul knew it. That's the reason he spoke of that communion. And the word of God speaks of this fellowship like this. As many as are led of the Spirit. And there are thousands today professing the power of the Holy Spirit, professing the fullness of the Holy Spirit, who know practically nothing about this being led of the Spirit. And remember something, when you're being led, you follow. You do not do the leading. Do you really know what it means to be led of the Spirit, to follow Him? There's a closeness. I tell you the truth. You say to me, how can it be in the Spirit, Miss Kuhlman? How can it be in the great service when you call out a healing away up in the balcony and there are thousands there and you can't even see in that top row of the balcony and yet you sense, you know, the Holy Spirit bears witness that one's healing. No, my friend, it is not ESP, and I beg of you, please, do not label it as ESP. I know nothing about ESP whatsoever. I've never read a book. I've never read anything regarding ESP. I know something that is greater. I know of a person. I know of a power. 
I follow him. I am led of him. And I become so sensitive to him. Totally unaware of the throngs out there. I'm only conscious of the leading of the spirit. as many as are led of the Spirit. But there are thousands who are trying to lead to the Spirit. And that's the reason you get out of the will of God. That's why you've gone off into fanaticism. That's the reason you do such unsightly and unseemly things. That's the reason that you bring such reproach sometimes on something that's so beautiful and so marvelous. That's the reason there are such manifestations in the flesh instead of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a person or a power that you and I can use. The Holy Spirit must always use the vessel, the surrendered vessel. Then I want you to see something else that's so marvelous. When you really know the person of the Holy Spirit. I believe that there's a time in every life, I don't care who you are, I don't care how deeply spiritual you may be, when you do not know the perfect will of God, when you do not know how to pray. As a woman said to me the other day, I had entered a shop. And she confided in me. <laughs> and she said, you know, We've just found out my mother has cancer, and I don't know how to pray. I don't know whether to pray that God will take her, because it's his time to take her, or whether to pray for a healing for a physical body. Or perhaps you have come to the edge of your Red Sea, and you do not know just how to pray. It's most difficult sometimes. But remember something. There is one who knows the perfect will of God. The one who is perfect wisdom. The one who is perfect knowledge. And when you get the place and you do not know how to pray, and you're spiritual enough, when you come to that point of surrender, where you have surrendered your will to the will of God, and two wills become one will, I'm telling you something that you may not need tomorrow or the day after, but as surely as you're part of humanity, you're going to need the very thing that I'm saying to you this very hour. When you can get to the place where you have no will of your own in a given matter, and you have completely yielded the will in that matter, do his will. And two wills become as one, his will. And you leave the matter completely to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. He will intercede for you. He'll come before the throne of God and pray with you and through you and in you. And you cannot miss the will of God. God, I promise you. Do you know the Holy Spirit in that prayer life of yours? Where you do not fight against the will of God, but where you yield yourself to His will. There's more, my friend, when it comes to the mighty third person of Trinity, than the manifestation of his power, than the, the gifts of the Spirit, more than the healing of the physical. There is a communion, there's a fellowship, 
the one who takes the loneliness out of your life. You can trust him. Jesus trusted him, and he knew him better than I've ever known him. And I feel that if Jesus could trust him, surely I can trust him. I can trust him to lead me. I can trust him to guide me. I can trust him to protect me and to overshadow with his divine presence. You know, I really love this message. Um, I thought it was so interesting what she said about um, being zapped in the spirit. There really is no way to describe it, but Catherine used to say, um, slain by the power of God. In fact, I did read somewhere that she was the one who actually dubbed that expression, slain in the spirit. And actually, she was the one who made um, famous the word of knowledge and the falling out under the power experience. It was unheard of in the denominational churches uh, for hundreds of years and um, but she brought that revelation back to the mainline churches and the churches of America especially um, like I said the word of knowledge and the falling out under the power um, and then it became more commonplace practiced in more and more churches even some denominational churches had that experience manifesting um, you know, but she had the real thing, I believe. And there is a counterfeit falling out under the power too. I a fake experience. It, it can either be of God, of the flesh, or of the devil. You know, for everything real that God has, Satan has a counterfeit. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was a really, really good message. Um, she talked about the loneliness of the consecrated life because she really did have the consecrated life and she was surrounded by thousands of people. Can you imagine? And yet, in the natural, she felt alone, lonely. But for the fact that she had the Holy Spirit, her, her best friend, she said that was the greatest experience of her life, knowing that fellowship and that communion of the Holy Spirit. So I hope you guys were all blessed by this video. There will be more to come. God bless. Bye.